It's super easy to put a speaker on the table, connect it to Spotify or YouTube, and now your players know it's game time. They know the vibe of the game, they know whether it's fantasy, sci-fi, or action. It's not as exciting as hot wizard of the coast drama, but Creating an immersive D&D game isn't just about the story or the characters, it's about the atmosphere you build around the table. The key to a great atmosphere is watching my buddy Atmos Seeker. <laughs> <laughs> Go check them out. But really, the key to a great atmosphere is lights and sounds. And today, I'm going to talk about sound. I'm going to go over why sound is the best way to crafting unforgettable D&D experiences. By carefully selecting and customizing the music and ambient noises, you can transport your players directly into your setting. The core concept of DJing your games is having a selected number of loopable themes, both music and environments. They're ready to go, pre-mixed, labeled, so it's just a click of a button to change your player's passive sensory experience. I've gone through dozens of music libraries. I've tried things that don't play and things that I've noticed no one notices. As a game master, you already think a lot like a storyteller, a character performer, and a game designer. But the efficient thinking method here, you want to think like a game dev. Collect assets that can be reused, repurposed for different parts of your game. This is actually one of the reasons why I prefer scatter terrain over modular sets like Dwarven Forge. I recommend planning your sessions first, as you normally would, then add your sound. I typically start by looking for my locations. Cities, towns, villages, taverns, forests, jungles, tundra, in the sky, under the sea, at sea, in a volcano, or a campfire. <laughs> <laughs> These locations don't need music, they just need diegetic ambient sounds. Diegetic meaning sounds that originate from the world. Ambient meaning background. It creates a sense of place and atmosphere. It's not supposed to be distracting and it's just supposed to be satisfying to listen to. Kind of like a lo-fi channel when you're doing homework. For my players, especially those who play games off camera. They light up like children going to the movies for the first time when I do this. To do this, I have files that I've edited together, turning a single playlist into a long, single, unique track that I've mixed together. I have them saved on my SSD, plugged into my laptop, then a couple Elgato stream decks for cues on those tracks. I can literally just click, click, click to mute different tracks and enable other tracks. And really, we're running around with very beautiful sounds and of course, music. When it comes to music, I mostly look to set emotional themes, but sometimes those beats and themes have to drag on. So you really wanna look for two to three minute long loopable songs. No lyrics, those are super distracting, especially if you're making actual plays. <laughs> the last thing you want is the lyrics of the song to compete with the player's dialogue. Now that being said, if you edit your actual plays and you have some lyrics like I do for the Age of Moonlight, which are my elves. Those probably have some thematical value in a establishing shot of your minis or something like that. Maybe a cutaway to a cool art shot. But for the most part, for a normal game, don't have lyrics. It's too distracting. If you have a long playlist of songs, you'll never get to the fourth track. <laughs> Just stick to one to two loopable tracks per mood. It's going to be great. You'll be fine. I typically have a softer, sad song, a heroic adventure, tense and spooky, spiritual and holy, and a couple more. This mostly gets me where I'm going, but I'm actually trying to go a little bit harder on this for my storytelling. For example, I'm working with a composer at the moment to create motifs for each era of my world, Aida. From the motifs, him and I are making ambient tracks for each era, so that ambient tracks can actually play in the dungeons as theme tracks. So the musical theme of each dungeon represents the historical origin of the dungeon. What if this was made in the giants during the Age of Thunder, the dragons in the Age of Wrath, or elves in the Age of Moonlight? Or has it been there since the beginning during the Primordial Age? Let the music kind of communicate that a bit. Uh, if you have returning players and you play with the same group over and over, they will catch on to this. They will start paying attention to the sounds that you're playing. If you're doing an actual play, you can guarantee the audience will catch on to this. But most importantly, I have combat music. I say most importantly because when you sit down to play D&D or Alien RPG or Mothership or Shadow Dark or 
pick a game. Everyone is expecting action to go down. In a horror game, you're trying to avoid it. In D&D, you're hoping for it. Also, combat in D&D takes forever. You want to keep energy and focus and just make it a good fun game. Music goes a long way with that. I typically have four different combat tracks. A medium common baddie like bandits or goblins or orcs, one for large monsters, one for giants, and then one for undead. I want to make more combat tracks, uh, especially because I'm recording my games and cover all the different types of monsters and classes so I can change the energy every turn, but that's the extra mile. You don't have to do that. In fact, you shouldn't. <laughs> you might think this is difficult or a lot of work. I understand. But once you try a couple times, you quickly realize it's as easy as memorizing any of the game rules for the game that you're playing. And it will start inspiring you to do more musical and sound based things in your game. It's a special kind of madness. You don't have to be an audio engineer. It doesn't have to bleed your wallet dry unless you hire a composer and you know, I'm a special kind of crazy. As long as you have the right tools that work for your brain, you got this. Typically, I have my laptop, a Bluetooth speaker in front of the GM screen or somewhere under the table or on the ceiling. Especially if I'm recording, I want the speaker away from the mics. Then I pre-program every button on my Elgato, which is exhausting and a lot of prep work. But there are softwares and sites now out there that are making it easier. I'm kind of jealous with their own libraries and environments and songs, which means less downloading, less mixing, less pre-making files which then add an, a burden of obstacle to change something in the future. You can make things more customizable more often with less work. That's pretty good. One of which, Fantasy Plus. This is not a paid sponsor. I checked them out. They're running a Kickstarter after being in beta for four years. They're made by two brothers. That's the whole company. The reason why I'm bringing them up is that I think it will benefit you just like it's going to benefit me. Let me get into it. Out of all the software systems I've tried, Fantasy Plus would be the one I would use if I transitioned away from my Elgato to more software based. It's easy UI. That's super important. You have too many playlists, one on the left and one on the right with just a couple tracks. Playlists might be the wrong word for these two pillars of files because you can make multiple playlists for multiple scenes or themes like I mentioned before. These two pillars left and right, you can put multiple tracks in there, mix them at different volumes or just balance the volume for one over the other. So one side can be your music. The other side can be your environment. So you can actually plan locations a lot better. That's pretty convenient. And that's not that far off to what I'm already doing, which is why I think it's worth telling you about. At the bottom, they have quick sound effects you want to blast off, which is fucking great. Either shoot off a lightning bolt to combat or a dramatic moment like a storm's coming. Open and close a door. Mystery monster growl in the background. An evil laugh. Wanna <laughs> stuff like that. Uh, when it comes to those quick sounds, when I started getting deep into the sound effects and sound design for my games, those are things in my current workflow that are really hard to do with the Elgato. Basically, I just need more Elgatos <laughs> and I need to do better mixing. With what I've played around with in Fantasy Plus, it kind of does exactly what I want it to do. <laughs> what was that? I haven't used them in a the game yet, but if I run a game that isn't in my home and I don't want to carry all my Elgatos and all my hardware, I'm going to be using Fantasy Plus. I, it's just my laptop and a speaker, sometimes not even the speaker. So Fantasy Plus is running a Kickstarter. It's intended to address a lot of the biggest feature requests that their communities have had, and I'm going to back them. I love supporting smaller creators like myself who have a small team, if no team at all, and they want to make something grand with their passion, their skills, and their ideas. Which is poignant, since in my world, the Age of Wrath is a draconic crusade. So let's rewind time. In the Age of Thunder, 11,000 years ago, the giants ruled through tyranny. They experimented on Genasi, called Jin and created the first orcs. In Aeda, orcs are more half giant than Tolkien monsters. The Canaan orcs, the Goliaths, the Furbolgs, and the Bugbears were all made in the image of their Olympian Jotun gods, which created the first use of divine magic. 
but giants got greedy in their horrific mad chimera magic. They took newly hatched dragons from their nests and made them draconians, Aida's dragonborn. They mixed them with goblins and made kobolds. As you can imagine, the dragons, especially the mother of dragons, Bakanawa, and her firstborn children, the Great Worms, also known today as the Dark Seven, led a worldwide crusade against the Olympians. This was the Age of Wrath. If you think the dragons were the good guys, oh no. The eldest son of the dragons, the great worm hatched at the center of the world, Anaphyraxis, breathed fire down on anything and anyone in his way. A true colossal ancient dragon of fire and magma, and a real sociopath, which is a great villain to have in a campaign, especially poignant when an entire villain pack is called Wrath. I hope this short video inspires you to try adding some extra immersion into your game. And if you want to make it easy for yourself, try Fantasy Plus. If you want to check out my uncut games that I run with music and sound, head over to my Patreon. The cinematic edited versions, though, are here on YouTube with all the fat cut out, added sound effects, and new musical tracks to make them pop. Until next time, hit the like button.